Welcome to part five of our adventure in Iraq. Our names are Luke and Polly, and thanks for following our series here in Iraq. Whenever we travel somewhere new, the first thing we look up to see if there's trains we can take. Whether if we're traveling through countries in Europe, all over the vast country of India, 19 hour trains in Pakistan, or traveling the length of Egypt, just to name a few. The longer the train, the better. So when we decided to take our most adventurous trip yet to Iraq, I knew we had to take the overnight train. Join us as we take the 530 kilometer trip from Baghdad to Basra in southern Iraq. Okay, shukran. I made it to the train station. It's a very beautiful train station. We got in just a little passport check with the extremely nice guy. He seemed a little confused why we were alone, not with any Iraqis. I had to tell him it's the fun way to do it. He's like, you're crazy, but all right. I gotta, show, I gotta stop talking and show this train station. It's beautiful. Baghdad Central Station, known as the crown jewel of Iraq's railway network, was designed by British architects and completed in the early 1950s. Like a lot of the country, the station was damaged during the U.S.-led invasion in 2003, but luckily has since been restored to regain some of its former splendor. In the railway's heyday, luxury travel to Jerusalem and even as far west as London was offered. But sadly, those days are long gone and the only overnight option is to Basra. How nice is it? And it's like a ghost town. There's literally no one here. I was just opening up every door to find a bathroom. We have the place to ourselves, which also means there's no one here to buy a ticket from. All right, so it's almost four o'clock. The train leaves at five. Not a single person here. Stores are all closed. I'm gonna try to talk to the conductor. And see if there's any possible way to buy a ticket. In every country I go to, if they have a, an overnight sleeper train, I take it. I mean, I love it. It's cool seeing how they operate in different countries. I really, I love it. And it's better than like flying or taking a bus because in a train you can get up, you can walk around. There's usually a food cart. So I'd rather take like a 12 hour train than a two hour flight or something. But that's just me. I see one person at the station. I guess we're not completely alone. Oh wow, and someone took a taxi right up to the train. That guy's doing it right. Hello. Uh, Basra? Does this go to Basra? Hey, bro. This one? This Where can I buy a ticket? S sorry. Where can I buy a ticket? Buy a ticket inside. Is it open? Inside the company, yes. Inside. It's open? Yeah, uh, now? I, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, open. I didn't see anyone in there. Sorry. I didn't see anyone in there. I'll check. Uh huh. I'll check. M maybe now a uh, receipt after one hour open. Oh, okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Shukran, Habibi. Shukran. Thank you. Shukran. Uh, USA. USA? USA, yes. Somehow United States of America. Yes, sir. America? <laughs> America. Where America? Washington? Uh, New, York okay. oh, New York City. Oh, New York City. New York City, yes. <laughs> shukran, shukran. <laughs> okay. I love you. I love you too. I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, brother. Shukran. Habibi. Habibi. All right. Like I made it seem like in an hour we could buy a ticket and it leaves at 7.30. I love this country, but the 
it's like the facts are like always, no matter who you ask about anything, it gets always different. The train leaves at 5, it leaves at 6, it leaves at 7.30. The train station's closed, the train station's open. You never know. That's part of the adventure. Like, I like this stuff. I like figuring out the, the problems, talking to the people. I love it. We'll figure it out. I think... made it back inside. And I'm seeing some more people walking around too, which is a good sign. <sighs> Hot out there. After patiently waiting in what felt like an abandoned train station, we saw a single light flicker on at the ticket booth. Hello. No. Uh, uh, like uh, for sleeping, like uh, they have just the uh, first class uh, okay. for today. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not that expensive. The difference is just 10,000. It's not oh, 25 okay. for each one. Okay. So he told me like if they agree I can book the tickets for them now. Alright, so we got our tickets. Thirty thousand dinar for first class sleeper train, which is just over twenty dollars, which is great. Alright, welcome back to the train station. There was like a little like if they check your passports and stuff coming in here again and they were so nice and they took a few selfies. Holly got a selfie. so nice. They're taking selfies or taking pictures for us. It was very nice. Now to find our train. Uh, so we have to take our bags off and line them up. I think they like search it. There's like a dog that comes and sniffs it. As I was about to show the security line, an officer with a machine gun came up to us. So of course I put down my puny GoPro. He ended up being a really nice man that just asked for our passports. But here's a photo of what the security line looks like. Alright, so there's like a little bit of a, uh, the train's really loud. There's a little bit of like a security thing. But they like kind of look through the bags, but not really. Uh, once again, the soldiers were all smiles. They were holding like big guns. At first, they looked intimidating. Uh, they just asked a few questions, and then with a big smile, they said, we're good to go. And they said, Basara? Why? Yeah. As it always happens. Why? Yeah, it's always a big question, like why? Tourism. Alright, going on the train. Salam alaikum and welcome to the first class sleeper train from Baghdad to Basra. I'm going to show you around. So far, it's been an incredible experience. The train leaves exactly at 7 o'clock on the dot, and we got, like I said, our first class.
nice. I think the most similar looking one I've ever taken was in uh, in Egypt, but it was like five times the price and outdated. This one seems new. It seems it's very clean. It's new. So for the price and what it looks like, I prefer this a lot more. Right. On the hunt for a cafe cart. With stomachs filled with chai, we made it back to our room where hours passed like minutes, playing cards until we fell asleep, and before we knew it, we were pulling up to Basra. Just woke up a few minutes ago. Uh, that was the best I've ever slept on a train. Um, feels so good to actually sleep. Uh, the, it's 5 a.m. right now, so the this whole entire trip is only 10 hours long down to Basra, which is quicker than I thought. Um, it was a nice smooth ride. Um, we're about to get off here any minute. It just stops and maybe we're actually here. Um, I'm excited to go explore Basra. Sugar. Ooh, it's already nice and hot. It's 5.30 a.m. and it's, it feels like it's already a steamy one. And just like that, we were officially in Basra walking through the exit line as if we were a couple of locals, a couple of sweaty locals. And speaking of locals, we were picked up by two of them. In true Iraqi hospitality, our friend Mustafa was there at 5 a.m. to pick us up. And someone else you may recognize from our earlier videos as her. Welcome to Basra. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we just ran into in the street. Hi, good morning. Thanks for getting us, brother. Welcome to Basra. Thanks for getting us, man. 
Good to see you again. Likewise. Thank you. Stay tuned to see more of our adventures in the south of Iraq. <laughs> ترى دقن الوكت دق الكحيل مصطفى يا عيني دقن الوكت الوكت يا ابويا يا ابويا يا